Alden Ehrenreich. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll just get started from the beginning, the inception. Um, where are you from and where did you grow up? Uh, um, I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I grew up in uh, on the west side of Los Angeles. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay. So how did you get started in the business of acting? So when I was, I was always acting when I was a little kid, I was in plays and I was doing, you know, I was always doing different musicals and things as a kid. And then when I was in high school, I did, uh, um, or, or middle school, I went to a, a different school that had a great performing arts program called Crossroads. And I was doing a lot of theater there and I was doing a lot of filmmaking and we had a great, filmmaking teacher video production teacher named billy robertson we would do these little videos and go see movies and, and that's where i really started uh met a bunch of people met a bunch of other kids who really loved movies and it like really elevated our whole conversation we would meet every friday and talk about movies and go see movies da, 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 da. and um and around this time i started making little movies of my own I made one with a friend of mine for another friend of ours's bat mitzvah, kind of a silly video, and then played it there. And then I got discovered through that video, basically. Steven Spielberg was at the bat mitzvah and saw me. So that, that was, was that pure luck or? I mean, it was, it was luck. It was the the privilege to be going to a school where that kind of thing could possibly happen it still wasn't like that was happening that was still a huge anomaly and pretty crazy um but it wouldn't have happened unless i'd been able to go to that school um but and then you know yeah like outside of, and then past that it was pretty much just luck he was there and and saw me on this video and 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 liked me and thought that i was funny in this video and then that was how my career started <laughs> So Where, tell us, what part of town are you? Oh, I'm in Fort Washington, Maryland. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I, I've lived here uh, for a while now. But uh, <laughs> tell us more about your uh, your latest project, uh, Shadow Brother Sunday. Yeah. Who you play. So this is a short film that I wrote and directed um, and, and acted in. Uh, it's about the older brother of this young movie star who's a failed musician. He's kind of had a, you know, hard time and he's living in his car and he's fallen on hard times and he's come back to the family's house on the day of his younger brother's big movie premiere to uh, take the younger brother's computer and sell it to the paparazzi because he needs money. And, but what it's really about is his relationship with the family and 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 more broadly than that it's about the people who fall through the cracks of the sort of success festival you know like people who don't necessarily uh you know make it and when one of their family members whether it's in entertainment or or just in any field is super successful what that can do to somebody psychologically and emotionally Okay, so and and you wrote this project too. You said, yeah. Is is this uh based off any real life events or? Not not strictly. Uh, I have two brothers, but their our relationship is not like this at all. Um, I was really writing about um feelings that I'd had, feelings that other I felt other people had had around me. You know, some I I'd been the person who was who had had a lot of success and was talking to somebody who hadn't and what that, that so maybe somebody I'm close with and feeling a kind of a tension or a strain or feeling a kind of a why does this feel differently than when it was just us when we were just friends and we could just be you know in the same boat why is there something else in the room now and I've also been the other on the other side of it being with somebody that I really you know, in my heart of hearts, really just care about and want to be close to, but because they've had a certain success, because maybe I'm feeling in some way like a failure in that particular moment, my, I'm, I'm somehow feel blocked from being able to open to them or be close to them or open my heart to them. So, um, so it's coming out of those feelings and then it's heightened in such a way in Los Angeles because of the concentrated 
attention and focus on one industry in Los Angeles, it just is is all the more made a little more intense. It's like everybody works in the same industry. Not not that's not exactly true at all, but that's what it can sometimes feel like in a certain part of the city. And um and and as a result, it almost, you know, people just feel like nothing. You know, you people show up to a party and you ask, you know, so what are you up to these days? And wanting to have an impressive answer is like and being afraid of having asked that and not having anything exciting or impressive to say is like a genuine terror that we all kind of live with. <laughs> it's, so. it's, it's an ego thing. Yeah, it's an, exactly. It's an ego thing. So another way of saying it, too, is the ego gets in the way of our ability to love the people we love, you know? No. But, uh, do you have any other upcoming projects after this or? I know there's a SAG after strike, but uh... right. So as an actor, I have some projects I can't really talk about, but I have a um, I have a theater space on the east side of Los Angeles that I'm putting together to start as a playhouse in L.A. Um, and uh, in it's in an old uh, trolley station. And then I'm writing uh, the feature film, totally different story than this one, but that this is kind of the spiritual you know, next step of, um, yeah. Okay. So what, as an actor, what do you enjoy most about your work? I really enjoy so much of it. Um, you know, I'm prepping a role right now and I'm doing all this kind of research and it's just terrific to do that part of it. But the thing that is where the real magic is, is between action and cut, you know, when you are, when you are, doing something and you're able to release and surrender and let something else happen that's not in your control between action and cut after you've done lots of preparation gotten ready and then you just let it go and play the way you did when you're a little kid inside of that magic little moment it is such a joy and a thrill and it uh, and it's made all the more thrilling when you have another actor that you're really connected with or we have a director who's facilitating that it's a, just a fucking joy and 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 directing myself or getting to act uh i enjoyed that even more because i could take risks i could i could be bold i could do things that might be totally wrong that i wouldn't necessarily do when there's somebody else there that I know I'm supposed to be doing my job for, but when I'm the person that's behind the camera as well, I feel a license to experiment and to take risks and be daring inside of the frame that, and, and, and encourage other people to, because I know that I have the control of I have the, the editorial uh, control at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, a, that's a very nice feeling. I know myself because I'm a filmmaker too. Great. Yeah, um, but because I know in back in 2018, you played Han Solo in Solo, a Star Wars story. But what besides that, I guess, is your dream acting role that you always wanted to acquire? Oh, I, it's so funny. You know, I've never I grew up watching all these old movies and I loved all these actors in these old movies, you know, like, um, you know, all kinds of movies. But I was I was. um I've never really had um, a specific desire around, I've had little fleeting things, but for the most part, I've always, all the best roles I've ever gotten to play were totally surprises to me. Like all the, the roles that have come my way that I love the most, I would have never been able to imagine in advance of getting that part because it's not so much a specific thing as it is wanting to find a part that's written by someone you feel is truly invested in these characters, who's done a great service to who these characters really are and who's writing a story that they feel personally connected to and want to make. And so that can look like a million different things, but um, uh, so I never, so it's, you know, it's my dream role is whatever, the filmmaker that I find or connect with is the most passionate about making sort of. All right. And where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Um, I think the big question is what the, for me is the split between directing and acting. I'd like directing to be at least equal 
to the acting in terms of what I'm doing because I get so much creative gratification out of that. Um, and then, uh, and then this theater space, you know, building a community and a, and a kind of a, a group around that theater space and doing plays. And so some split between <laughs> making my own films on a, on a, like, you know, maybe every other year, and and acting occasionally in between those films and doing uh and doing my own theater space so we'll have to circle back in five years and see where i'm at yeah hopefully we do yeah but uh those are all the questions i have alden aaron reich it it has been a pleasure sir you too thank you so much so are you at howard right now no uh no i graduated uh last year oh congratulations and you studied film there yeah i got my mfa in filmmaking and right now I'm just PA and doing gigs and doing other content creation. I also work as a course instructor teaching Adobe Audition for Fairfax Public Access. So, uh, okay, yes, yeah. nice. is that Chadwick Boseman on the on your? Yeah, that is Chadwick Boseman. Like I, my mom put that there. Nice, great. And what's your filmmaking aspirations? You want to be a filmmaker and a director? Yeah. I I do want to be a writer. I do want to be a director. I've directed a number of short films in college at Manhattanville College and Howard. Um, and I, I, I've really I've been emailing a bunch of people to see if I, they can help. I've been writing scripts. Uh, right now, I'm taking a class with this guy Joseph Sawyer, who is who is one of the writers of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm actually have his class today uh the tv tv pilot writing so yeah just fingers crossed and they you know i can pitch something and hopefully maybe we can work together yeah what's the are you interested in film or television or both um both well more film but yeah. i i i could do tell i am open to doing television and learning it cool that's great well good luck but you know the the fact that you're writing i think is great because the longer I've been in the business, the more I realize that everybody's just waiting for a great piece of material. And if you write a really, really strong script and really develop your muscles as a writer, you get to skip the line real fast because there is a lot of stuff out there and very little of it is really wonderfully written. And that's what everybody's waiting for. That's what all the great filmmakers, unless they're writing it themselves, are looking for. And all these places are looking for. And I've seen people who have no opportunity or resources write a great script and it like is a magic wand that helps them assert where they want to go. And as an actor, I'm always looking for that as a filmmaker, I'm either writing it myself or looking for it. So, you know, yeah, yeah it's great. But, but I mean, I, I always thought that it's not what you do or who you, or what you know, or how much talent you have. I thought it was always who, you know, I think that's a, I think that, I don't think that's primary. I think knowing people matters in the sense that you, if you've made something that you, that's really great, then knowing somebody is going to help you get it made. So Wes Anderson made his first film and James L. Brooks took a shot on him and helped him get it made. But if Wes Anderson hadn't had the script for Bottle Rocket, it wouldn't matter that he knew James L. Brooks, you know? And the most important thing is figuring out who you are as an artist and really committing yourself to that and then everybody can see that and smell that. But knowing people without having that developed isn't going to, you know, maybe that'll get you some early jobs or some access into the industry. And that's great. But the it's equally important to always stay working on, forgive me if I'm giving like unsolicited advice or whatever. If you, it's fine. You know, but but uh, stay connected, stay working on the thing that you care the most about because they'll turn you into what they want you to be really fast and you might lose sight of the thing that got you passionate about this in the first place. So always believe in your own instincts, always have your own thing happening at the same time and never let anybody else and what they say it should be like, even if you really admire them, respect them and want to work with them or learn from them, take you away from what you believe in, in your own heart and what made you, you know, excited to do this in the first place, because that's the thing you're really going to pay off that's that's the thing that you have the shot for you know that's what got you interested and passionate about this i imagine in the first place yes it is i'm still passionate about it. i yeah but yeah thank you sir for your help and your advice and I, and I really do hope to work with you work with you someday me too all right pleasure to meet you
You too. Have a good rest of your day. Bye bye.